atomic batteries to power. Turbines to speed. Roger. Ready to move out. You ever dance with the devil in the pale moonlight? This town needs an enema. Riddle me this. Riddle me that. Who's afraid of the big black bat? When Gotham and Ashes, you have my permission to die. This is your liberation. My mother warned me about getting into cars with strange men. This isn't a car. 20 years in Gotham, how many good guys are left? How many stayed that way? He has the power to wipe out the entire human race. Tell me, do you bleed? You will. I want you to tell all your friends about me. What are you? He's a silent guardian. A watchful protector. I'm Batman. Welcome to the Batman on Film Podcast. Here are your hosts, Bill Jet Rainey and Rick Shu. Ma'am, I answered your question. I'm sorry, sir. Ma'am, I answered your question. I answered the darn... I'm cooperating here. And there, uh, there's no... Uh... Sir, you have no call to get snippy with me. I'm just doing my job here. I'm... I'm not... Uh, I, I'm not arguing here. I'm cooperating. And there's no... We're doing all we can. Sir, could I talk to Mr. Gustafson? Well, heck, if you want to... If you want to play games here... I'm working with you on this thing here, but... Okay. I'll do a damn luck count. Sir, right now? Yeah, right now. You're darn tootin'. Hey now, you betcha. Welcome to the Batman on Film Podcast. I'm coming to you from the great state of Minnesota this morning. Oh, yeah. Anyway, how y'all doing? How'd you like that? Is that just like an like a, a, a episode of Fargo no, or great. something? This is your... The host and the founder of Batman on Film, Bill Jett Ramey. I am in Minnesota, not in Texas. Only one Texan on the podcast this morning, and that is my co-host, Rick Shu, representing our state. How you doing, Rick? Yeah, I just feel really obligated to be, like, really Texan right now. Okay, What's going on, go. Batman on Film? Yeehaw! <laughs> we're, fi- we're fixing to ruck this thing up, man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we are fixing to do all that. Right. Uh, all right. Justin, how are you doing this morning? Should, should I be stereotypically uh, Californian? <laughs> yes. Well, I'll play to our stereotypes from our location. Dude, I'm totally fine out here in California. <laughs> awesome. Uh, <laughs> hey, Justin, you, can, I, can, I, can I can I kind of let you guys in yeah. on, a little, on a little secret to me? Yeah. I actually, to this day, can can recite Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure from beginning to end verbatim. And oh, I always I, I used to always say I was going to marry the the woman that was impressed with it. I never met her. And it's certainly <laughs> not. And it's certainly not my wife. But anyway. Oh, Marty. Marty's not impressed by that. No. No, she okay. she even said to me one day she's okay, prove it, and I started to do it. I started off with the George Carlin monologue at the beginning, and I got all the way to like wow. when they were in, in history class together, and she was like, okay, enough, I'm I'm done. I can do Ferris Bueller's Day Off. I can't do Bill and Ted's. Ferris Bueller's Day Off, <laughs> yeah. one of the oh, smartest that's, scripts ever. That's my all time favorite movie. Could be a fascist anarchist, still wouldn't change the fact that I don't <laughs> own a car. There you go. I can do uh, I can do Smoking the Bandit. So <laughs> let me go grab a Diablo sandwich and a Dr Pepper. And I'll, I'll, I'll make it fast because. We're in a GD hurry. Anyway, and Ryan, representing North Carolina this morning. How you doing, Ryan? Oh, uh, I'm doing good. <laughs> I'll take that. Is that, okay, I'll take is that a typical more. North Carolina? You know what? I'm mean? not. I am from East Tennessee, so it's more like Southern drawl and just ready to roll. All right. This morning, we're going to talk about the ultimate edition, director's cut, whatever you want to call it. Uh, Batman v Superman Dawn of Justice that came out digitally this last week, and we've all seen it. I guess the biggest question is, did it improve the film? Justin, I know you've uh, just chatting with you or looking at some exchanges on Twitter and so forth that you thought it was uh, a little bit better. So go ahead. What's your initial thoughts on the Ultimate Edition? I actually really enjoyed the stuff that they put in. I felt like it really added to especially Clark Kent's whole story. I'll preface with it. I don't think it's still, I don't, I still have problems with the movie. Like put that out mm-hmm. there. But I mean, I've said all I said about like my issues with it, 
But I feel like the stuff that they added did help set up just a lot. You're, there are sometimes you're just like, they should have just kept this part in. It, to me, it helped, it helped explain motivations and it gave, it gave a lot of, uh, a credence to why you know Clark was so obsessed with going after Batman. Even the stuff about Lex Luthor. As much as I have problems with Bruce Wayne being duped, <laughs> I'm, I'm like Bruce mm-hmm. Wayne should have been on top of a lot of this. It, it, yeah. it filled in some of the gaps. So for a movie that I was disappointed in, which I still liked, <laughs> I, I gave it a B minus. So that's still good. Um, it made it better for me. It's a rated R Batman and Superman movie. That's my biggest problem. Just to, you know, to wrap that up. I I thought it made it better. For me, I made the viewing experience better for Batman versus Superman. All right. Ryan. Uh, I agree with a lot of what Justin said. I mean, it's a more fleshed out movie that has um, just more context to what is going on and why some of the creative decisions that they wanted to do were made. You know, and its its ideas are more fleshed out and executed better, but, but uh, I, I don't think it fixes a lot of the inherent issues with some of the creative decisions they made characterization and story. But I did enjoy it better. I, don't, I actually almost kind of wish I never saw the – the theatrical cut because mm-hmm. you know, this it it, ex, it 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 makes a case for itself a little bit better. It explains itself better. Uh, a lot of the extra things with well, a lot of the extra things with Lex, like uh, in his master plan, that was interesting. But it, but everything like at the end of the day, it still amounts to Lex was behind everything. And mm-hmm. the the third act of the film is really the most unchanged part of the of the cut. You know, it's a lot of things. I mean, it just. Whatever story points and things that were in BBS are just kind of amplified in this one and just explained a little bit, bit better. So for some people, they're, they're going to really love it. Some people are still going to hate it. And but for me, it closes the gap a, a little bit. You know, it's it's it, it is helpful, and I do agree that it's 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 a better film than the theatrical version. All right, Rick. I was in Oklahoma, I believe. You had called, and I missed your call as you had watched it. I guess the night it came out on digitally, but um. So we've talked a little bit about it, but go ahead and tell the folks listening what your thoughts are yeah, initially. Yeah, I watched it that first night, and I wanted to see it again because I, I kind of shoehorned it into my schedule and, and started it at like 11, and I was up till I don't know, whatever, the, uh, <laughs> two, two or three. <laughs> and so I was I was exhausted, and I was really ready for it to be over. And just like Ryan said, uh, I didn't the, – the third act was unchanged, and so that was that, – that to me is where the biggest flaws are in the film – and that didn't happen. I didn't. Nothing changed. And then I was also up, like with one eye shut, going, "And I don't want to see Doomsday anymore. I want to go to bed." So I actually ended up watching it again, and I, I did it in two pieces. I watched half of it a couple nights ago, and then I finished it last night. And here's sort of my general thoughts on it. I, I as you guys know, I gave it a B, and 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 Ryan coined the, the perfect phrase, my flimsy B, which why I don't just say B minus. I don't know, but flimsy B is better. Uh-huh. Um, and really, at the end of the day, it's still the same review. You know what I mean? It, it didn't really yeah. move the needle because there, there, I do thoroughly enjoy a great deal of those new scenes. And there are some things like the bomb being encased in lead and that being addressed. Like, wow, why, why would in the world would that have been cut? That's a yeah. To me, that was a very significant thing to leave out. I don't understand why they did. And so I really – some things were just kind of made me frustrated. Like, why, why was that not in there? And then there were other scenes where I was just kind of bored, and, and you're going, okay. To me, this is like watch this is kind of glorified deleted scenes on, on a DVD right now, and I see why they left this out. And, you know, guys, the, the most atrocious part of that film is the execution of Jimmy Olsen. And yeah. there's something yeah, about yeah. Yeah, and there's something about it in the original uh, theatrical release where it's just not as in your face because you don't know it's him until the ending credits. And then here is, you know, he introduces himself to Lois, and it's much more of a pronounced uh, meeting. And then, and then he's executed. It just it made that whole thing a lot worse for me. And um, Mark Hughes and I were, were chatting on privately on Facebook. Oh, I know where this is going. Yeah, and he he has a theory that it could it maybe it's actually not Jimmy Olsen, and that's a CIA cover or whatever. And hey, you know what? I don't think that was their intention, but I would certainly support if they no. decided to do that because it's 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 truly it's horrendous that he's that he's murdered. But um, but and I, I'm sort of harp on that. I just I can't not bring that up because that's a, it's a significant thing in the, in the extended release. But all in all, I I, I enjoyed it. Um, I like the film. I don't like it anymore. I don't like it any less. It didn't move the needle for me really either way. I just wish there were a couple of things that um, were put in the original release, and I wish and, I, and I'm glad to see a couple of things were left out. So it's kind of a watch. I'm with all of you pretty much. I think we're all in the same almost in the same position we were beforehand. To me, I'm still C, C minus on this film. There were a lot of things, there was, and, and just small things. I, when I watch what, like, 
that should have been in the film. The lead, the the bomb being encased in lead is one thing. Clark's motivations. Yeah. <laughs> I, I have a I have a slight just because like but we can get into that later. What we, about what? Go ahead. Oh, about the about the bomb encased in lead. Yeah, that, that really kind of very much changes the point in the movie that in the theatrical version, you know, Clark says things like, you know, I, maybe I didn't see it because I wasn't even looking. And that's kind of how they leave it up to you. So you mm-hmm. that ties into the whole question of, of – uh, Well, that's true, yeah. Yeah, it ties yeah. into the whole question of what Clark's – how Clark is reacting to the world of Superman. And in here, uh, in the theatric, in the extended cut with the – Showing that it was lead, it, it's just yet another thing that says no. He he didn't really have a problem with that. It was just like manipulating everything. So I I, I kind of flip flopping on that one. But go ahead. Well, yeah, and it, that was going to bring up my next point is that w- with Clark's motivations to to investigate Batman and and so forth, and and you see why he was adamant about the bat is dead and bury him and all that stuff when he encounters him and rips open the doors in the Batmobile. Yeah, that's fleshed out more, but still, he's still a dour, morose, depressed Superman guy the whole the whole time. It, it, that didn't change for me what, whatsoever. I mean, they really went overboard on, on making Bruce Wayne an a hole, and he's even more of an a hole in this in this version to me. I mean, he pops pills and sw- swigs it down with wine, and I mean, it's just it's just some things. I don't I don't know what creatively what they were going for, and. Um, yeah, it just didn't change anything for me as far as uh, my enjoyment of the film. The, the things that I liked, I still liked a whole lot. The things I don't like, I still don't like. And I do have an issue with, and Justin brought this up, and I agree with him. I can see a Lex, I can see Lex manipulating a somewhat of a rookie, naive Superman, but he's really going to pull all that off and pull the wool over the eyes of a 40 plus year old Bruce Wayne who's seen everything. I just I, I don't I don't buy that. And I think that's a that was a poor creative decision that Lex just Lex is behind everything and just played it the whole played the two heroes, played everybody. And that's just another thing that I didn't like about the film. And you know, I wrote a kind of a short review of it on Batman on film, which again spawned a whole series of butt hurt. I just I can't get Guys, I, I, I just can't I, – I can't – I'm trying to just ignore it, but it is it is just at, at all-time levels. And I, and there are a lot of folks and I, and there, that, that don't agree with me, and I don't agree with them, but it, it doesn't resort to the level of anger yeah. that some folks have about people who criticize Batman v. Superman. I just it's, – it's bizarre, and, and at the same time, it's, it's very expected, you know, yeah. sadly. You know, Bill, I, I've been, I've been reflecting on this quite a bit because there's there's been a lot of comments and um, on our website and our comment threads on iTunes about our negativity, mm-hmm. and I've I've been doing a little soul searching on that, and I almost actually put an email out to you guys. I was trying to put trying to find the right words, and and then I stopped myself, and and the and the reflection was this: I was like, you know, I'm not going to just ignore all of these comments. Maybe there's something to this. Maybe maybe we are. Being a little too negative. I, I, I don't want to dismiss what 40 people are saying. And then the more I thought about it, though, I ultimately did dismiss it, and here's why. And so this is speaking to them if they're, if, if they're listening, and I hope they are, is that the negativity is us being honest. And, and it's, not, it's not out of malice. It's not us just being cynical jerks. It's, it's, a, it's a group of guys that have a, a, a variety of different opinions on this film, but at the end of the day, we're all ultimately disappointed in it. And we want better things for the DCEU, and, and, and Batman and Superman both deserve a better platform than that movie. And I'm not going to apologize for feeling that way. I'm just not. And no, so, I'm not either. Right, exactly. And you know, and I almost did just because by virtue of – I give a damn what people say, I mean to an extent, and there was a lot of people saying the same things, and I, and I wanted to listen. But I'm like, but if, well, apologize for – we're just being honest. We're, we don't want this to be the way it is, and quite frankly – I don't even think the film deserves as much shit as it gets. I think it's better than 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 some of the uh, backlash, but yeah. it, it it certainly has its problems. And like we've said a million times, mm-hmm. at the end of the day, it did not do what it was supposed to do, which was resonate with mainstream audiences and, and get people excited for this extended universe. It failed. Period. It failed. And so we we want we want this to be better. That's it. We want it to be better. And this film, regardless. The, the only thing about this this whole thing being released that's really kind of getting on my nerves 
is this notion, and I'm hearing it a lot, that somehow like retroactively uh, people are now wanting to apologize to Zack Snyder for their comments and how this is just so much yeah. better of a film and, and just that's it, that's it's, just not true. It, it's absolute nonsense. Like I don't have well, a problem I knew it was gonna with happen. people I mean, liking this version. Even a little better is understandable. Like yeah, it, it went from a B to a B plus for me. That's cool, but it didn't go from a, a C to an A plus. It's just that's ridiculous. Mm-hmm. It is. I think overall, it's changed nobody's minds. No one. It's if you loved it, you still loved it. If you hated it, you still hated it. If you were like me and just kind of like, yeah, it's okay. You know, I think you're still going, huh? It's okay. It did nothing to change folks' minds. Yeah, maybe a few people go, well, I went from a C to an A+. Plus. Well, that's you, but that's not that's not the average uh, feeling for this film overall. Well, and, 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 and I also no, – sorry to interrupt, but I want to just comment on that point because I've been hearing that a lot too. And I said this to a guy the other day. I said, listen, man, are you sure that it's your jump was that significant based on this extended cut? Or just like a lot of times as as, as people – if I see it when I see a movie two or three times, I, I sometimes don't like a film very much. You know, it just will. And I think I think there's probably a little bit more of that. This is just this was just their second or third viewing period, and mm-hmm. they just felt like they, they, and it just resonated with them more. I, I guess I, I just can't for the life of me understand how this was a game changer for anyone. Well, yeah. let me say this for one thing about the negativity: we're being accused of having an agenda against this film. Go back and listen to the podcasts before that film was released. This group of us were championing this film and hyping this film up, and we were super excited for it before it came out. And yeah, and Rick's right. We're just being honest. And if you don't like the fact that we're being honest about it, and you've got no one here that hates the film. There's no one here on this podcast that hates that film. I'm probably, you know, I like it the least. But whatever. I don't hate it. I never said I hated it. And here's the thing that's really angering me to a point to where I just – I can't even take anybody serious if they bring it up. And Rick's – I know this is probably going to fire up Rick. <laughs> there are now people going back and bashing the Dark Knight trilogy as an argument in favor of Batman v Superman. It's you ridiculous. Have you, have you seen that, Rick? Of course I have, and it's – typically it's what I've seen is more about the Dark Knight Rises – uh, not so much the trilogy as a whole, but I have seen a little bit of it. But I, you know, I said to this guy on our site the other day. I said, "Listen, everybody's entitled to their opinion, but empirically speaking, The Dark Knight Rises is a better movie. Just from just from the standpoint." Yeah, of I had a movie. conversation about that the other day. Yeah, Billy, really, you saw that tweet. <clears throat> yes, it just it yeah, just I'll, is. I'll, it's I'll a better mean, film. I saw it's, that on the Facebook page hands a couple down. days ago. And I, I'm and here I'll go on record. I'm not a huge fan of The Dark Knight Rises, but it, it's leaps and bounds of a BVS. You know, and it is, opinion, and it, you know what I'm saying? Like, and, and you can't, you can't, yeah, yeah. I was gonna say you can't, you can't say like whatever faults you have with a film, you can't say, well, this one has, it has nothing to do with BVS. Even if, even if there is a movie that's the worst movie ever, you can't say, well, this movie's worse, so you should like this one better. That argument doesn't stick. Yeah, and that's what's going on, and it's directed toward the trilogy. And what blows my mind, I wrote in my uh, review, was that I said. Overall, this is still a dark, violent film that's not really that much fun to watch. Yeah. And so someone picks up that comment and goes, so the Joker doing the magic trick in The Dark Knight, that wasn't dark and blah, blah, blah. <laughs> and it's That has nothing to do with Batman v Superman. And, I, and, the, and the argument, I, I don't have any problem with the film being dark and serious. Yeah. It's just, there's just some, there's some, story elements that just aren't very good and didn't resonate with me at all. Hey, the, That's, the dark it has the, nothing to, yeah. the dark night is dark and serious. Yeah. For God's sakes. But you know what it also has? It has characters that we it has characters in it that we genuinely care about. And I love the characters in BBS because I I grew up with them and I love them. But I don't care about any character. Absolutely. So, yes. I just I just don't you know who I care about most? You, you know who is the most likable person is um is Alfred. And um, and to be honest with you, I think my favorite scenes in BBS are scenes between Bruce and Alfred, and I love love the casting of both of them. And and I am one of the reasons I like the Dark Knight trilogy so much is because I the the chemistry between Christian Bale and Michael Caine was just glorious, absolutely yeah. beautiful. And I was like, man, how are they gonna? We're, we're going to revamp Batman already, and how are they gonna how are they gonna make that work? I tell you what, it's there. It, yeah. The the new Bruce and Alfred is, in my view, just as good. I just want them to have a better platform. Is all. 
But I yeah. just want to get that on the record that I, I don't I don't care about any of these characters in BVS, and that's a big problem with the the film. I just who do you care about and why? You know, well, does that speak? No, it doesn't give you a reason to. Does, okay, does that speak to the fact that they didn't take the time to set any of this up and make us really care about any of these characters? I mean, we just went full salt into BVS because we had to have Justice League after it. They didn't build up to it. Not that I want them to do the Marvel thing with a bunch of solo films and then lead to Justice League, but I really can't argue against that way of doing it because it, it absolutely worked. By the time they got to the Avengers, I did have some history with all those characters and those films, and I don't want them to lighten it up. My criticisms, and when, when I say that they had to make some changes to the DCEU going forward, it's not that I wanted them to add more jokes and make it you know, all tongue-in-cheek and, and more quote-unquote humor and so forth in the film. I just want it to be better. Yeah. What are your thoughts on that? That's another criticism. Oh, you want it to be Marvel. You want it to be jokey, blah, blah, blah. That's, that's not what – I don't think anybody's saying that. Ryan, you, had, you, you talked about this uh, in, a, uh, in, a, in a thread, I believe. Did you not? Didn't you address this the other day with someone about the, the Marvel – you know, we want it to be Marvel accusations? Oh yeah, I think somebody did did uh, bring that up, you know, and I, I agreed, and I think I just agree with that person. I'm like, you know, this is they don't have to be like Marvel, they don't have to have the same tone and everything. It just whatever, and like Bill's been saying, from a majority standpoint, the film did not resonate with with the with the mainstream, and that is something that they need to kind of address with the, with the future films. Well, Ryan made a great comment last week, I believe it was last week's. Robert Reinke wrote, listened, and he wrote in. And some thoughts, and he thought it was just a great observation when Ryan yeah. said that these are the most reactive yeah. films ever. And he even – he said that was a great point. He said he, t he took it back further. I think Rick will appreciate this one. Man of Steel is almost a reaction to Superman Returns hmm. when everyone <laughs> said he didn't. Wow! Yeah, they wanted they wanted they wanted Superman to punch something. Right, they wanted the action. Yeah, and they, got, yeah okay. they wanted more action. And then they got action, and then there was too much, and then they had to address that. And you know, so what's your? I mean, that's just a great. We didn't really expand on that, but Justin, what, what's your thoughts on the whole that the, this DC is is like the most biggest reactionary series of films in this genre, at least? That's funny you say that because uh, just in the, the last week, a lot of people's ten year uh, Superman uh, Returns anniversary. Like posted popped up, uh, you know, ten years ago. Uh, oh yeah, Superman Returns came out, and so I, I read a lot of the different reviews. I let I read uh, Zaki Hassan's review and uh, a few others, just kind of going back and, and seeing what people thought of that. And so it's interesting that you said that because as soon as you said that, I was like, is that the whole reason they picked Zack Snyder? Like when they when they had the you know the list of directors that on, mm -hmm. online to to take on Man of Steel, were they thinking, okay, we need a guy who's gonna amp up the action and, and visually and maybe is that why they picked Zack Snyder and is which that's a great point what do you think you know yeah. BVS I, which, I, I didn't I thought that Chris Nolan handpicked him that's what I, we kept hearing at least well let's talk about that I know Chris was godfather in that film well, he he wrote he wrote co-wrote the story he produced the film and had a lot to do with Zack getting the job obviously but I got to think that also Warner Brothers had to have a, a big ha heavy hand in that as well. But just because – Justin's made a great point. Why Zack Snyder? Because they really wanted to ramp up the action? Because that I – th I tend to agree that that was uh, one of the biggest factors in getting Zack on board. Yeah. And That's, you know what? That When you bring that up, you know, one of the, the few consistent complaints with the Dark Knight trilogy also was – the lack of, you know, great action scenes or good fight scenes. So yeah. that could that could be a difference there too, you know, because Zack Snyder has a lot of experience with CG stuff and, and really and he employs some people that can do really great, you know, choreography and, and things like that compared to the mm -hmm. Dark Knight trilogy, which I mean the fights were there but they were kind of just there in a lot of places, you know, not not overall. There's there's some there's some fights in like Dark Knight Rises that are great, but but overall, you know, it's some of the fights are just kind of, you know, by the numbers and, and no, it's not the focus of 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 those movies. In, in, you know, I guess, I guess if you, yeah, I always thought like in Batman Begins at the dock scene it was a great Batman fight scene because yes. they yes. went from they went from the the crim the the criminals' point of view of being attacked by Batman, 
And I thought that was a pretty smart and pretty brilliant way to do it. And I guess if you can compare that to the Batman scene in Batman v Superman where he takes down Lex Henchman who had were there uh, had kidnapped Martha Kent that I like them both about equal. Yeah, that's that was a great Batman scene as far as the fight scene in BVS, but that but really the the Batman begins uh, Batman begins doc scene is just as just as good, but it's just a completely different way of looking at it. So, you know, I, I yeah. yeah. I, I get the criticism about the, the fights in the Dark Knight trilogy, but that wasn't my I, – I really had, personally had no issue with it. So, And for the record, I like – I did like Superman Returns, and I'm a big fan of Man of Steel. So yeah. it's just – it's got to where with BBS, that's where I – this is the first time in, I don't know, long time I've really had severe issues with one of these DC – Films from Warner Brothers, and I, I just want to add in real fast that the nightclub fight scene in The Dark Knight rocks. Oh yeah, I love that. Love, love that, that scene. Oh, when he goes after Maroney. Yes, there's a whole like really cool fighting style that Christian Bale adapted. It was called the Casey fighting method, which mm-hmm. was in, with, I don't with, know. The, with the with the elbows and all that kind of oh, stuff. Oh yeah, Close, and closeness that, to the I think body. That's one of the best examples of him using it. Yeah. Oh man. Yeah. Sorry, this has turned into The Dark Knight. <laughs> fan club podcast okay, but that, yeah, was, a, that yeah. was such a cool scene alright let's get back to the this ultimate edition of Batman v Superman it has yet to hit home video as far as Blu-ray and so forth is concerned how much impact do you think it's going to make on the mainstream and that's at any at all because that's where our concern has been how the mainstream is not excited about this stuff. Is this film going to affect them in that regard one way or the other? I, yeah, I can't see someone who's a mainstream movie watcher that went to the theaters to see it, walked away and happy about it, and, and care to sit through it again with 30 extra minutes. I just – I don't – I mean maybe. Maybe there's a handful of people anecdotally speaking, sure. But no, I don't think it's going to have any impact on, on the mainstream. And look, if it does, that would be awesome. I hope it does. But I don't think yeah. it will, and quite frankly, I don't think the film really – the new edition really lends itself to do that anyway. That it do, it does cover up some plot holes, or not cover up. It does it does. Well, how how am I trying to phrase this here? It fixes fill, it fill, fixes some fill it, it, fills it, it in fills yeah, it, in. Fills in. It, it it fixes some of these plot holes, but it also again makes one of the most horrendous scenes even more atrocious. So again, for me, it's a yeah. wash. But whatever, we'll, we'll, we'll see. So this here's the question I have with this ultimate edition: thirty extra minutes, people. Are saying well, it's better, a little bit better. Some people think it's it makes it great, whatever. So let's just say it's a little bit better. It fills in some plot holes, what have you, this and that. If that's the better cut, number one, why didn't you release it in the theaters? Well, I think we know the answer to that mm-hmm. is because it's a three-hour movie. And there's no way in hell they're going to make a three-hour put a three-hour movie in in a superhero movie, especially for the mainstream to see. People would just zone out. That brings up this question. Then why write a script to successfully translate it to film properly? It would take a three to four hour movie to do so. I don't I don't understand what they were doing when they were writing the film. So any thoughts on that, Justin? Yeah, I was just thinking, you know what, they could have put a three hour cut in the film. And here's why I believe that. I, I already sat in the theater for three hours because of trailers. I mean, I had about 27 yeah. minutes of trailers. I mean, that's a part of the movie-going experience, and I get it. That's marketing and stuff. But I feel like they should have just put this cut in, and eggs is better than, you know, having your tail cut off. You know what I'm saying? Like, mm-hmm. I feel I feel if this this film going, going in, like, it had it had a little bit of that buzz, pre buzz, like oh, standing ovations at Warner's and all that stuff for the for the studio to say, man, we got to cut this down to two and a half. That's just it's a weird that's just a weird plan yeah. coming out the gate. So mm-hmm. I would have yeah. I would have stood by what I thought was great and not hack it up and you know put that film in there and go, hey, you know if it's three hours, it's three hours, and you know people may like that. You know the critics may not have tore it apart as much if you know if it flowed as well. Like again, taking all the the issues with like character and and uh the things that we didn't like like you know superman being you know sad all the time like if the mm-hmm. story made sense i think more people mm-hmm. wouldn't have ripped it apart and yes. that 30 minutes was help was helpful like if regardless of like how we view you know what's going on in the movie like mm-hmm. it makes a little more sense and it's a little more fluid that could have helped and warner brothers i think they shot themselves in the foot going into panic this has been a ball of panic and mm-hmm. and it's 
it doesn't it just didn't come out strong so yep rick what do you think man yeah i mean i, I can just echo everything justin just said it's i i think that it, it was convoluted from the word go bill you've said this before they and you alluded to it earlier they wrote a script for a four-hour film and yeah. that's why it was a little bit of a of a train wreck when they got it down to two hours because it, it had weird pacing it had plot holes the editing was virtually non-existent and i mean it, you know you talk about and I know that people are going to really get annoyed with the, the the Chris Nolan Dark Trilogy, the Dark Knight trilogy. Talk about, it. I don't care. It's it's a frame of reference because those are three Batman films that are the most recent, other than this. And it's something that we really should strive to be as good as. Okay, let's get a filmmaker that wants to make these films even better than the Dark Knight trilogy. I'm all for that. But here's a big difference in in the Chris Nolan approach versus Zack Snyder's approach, and it goes to the heart of this very topic. There are no deleted scenes anywhere in the Dark Knight trilogy. Now, there might be a couple of things here and there that are bad takes or whatever, but as far as just deleted scenes, as far as I know, they don't even exist. And the reason they don't is because, damn it, they wrote a script and said this is the film, and they shot it, and they released it. Okay, mm -hmm. That's why Absolutely. it works. And in this, this is a four-hour movie cut down to a two-hour movie and then extended to a two-and-a-half-hour two movie. A two-and-a-half-hour movie that's supposed to be a four-hour movie is barely any better than a two-hour version. So, yeah, it's, um, I'm hoping that they learn their lesson, and maybe this whole thing with the Justice League now not being part one and a little bit more of a standalone film, maybe that's a sign of, of, of better days. Uh, not to get off topic in terms of the specific um, thing we're talking about here, but I am – and I said this the other day on Facebook. I like BBS. The extended version is out. I watched it. I enjoyed it. There's a lot of things about the film that I don't like. There's a lot of issues, but, man, there's a lot of things I really love about it, and – I am very comfortable with this cast carrying on these characters because the the cast is amazing. The movie mm -hmm. didn't just like suck where it's like start over. No, it was nothing like that. I am just re I'm ready to put BBS behind me, right? Like the extended version is out. I watched yeah. it. Let's yeah. I want to move on and 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 hope for better days. And and I think Suicide Squad is going to knock our socks off. And then I, I think, yeah, I think this is this is going to be, we, we've been trying to put this to bed for how long now? Three, four months almost? I think it's finally <laughs> the time to just actually let's BBS rest in peace and put it to bed, whatever way you want to look at it, because, I mean, there, I understand there's a little bit of beating a dead horse, but, I mean, with with this extended cut, we had to talk about it. And of course. Also, no, I agree. Yeah, I'm glad, I'm glad and, we're and, talking about it. Don't, don't get me wrong. And, and also, it's not like we... Just we're trying to beat the dead horse to use that phrase again. Things kept coming up with Warner Brothers and the DCU going forward that led back to BVS that we had to discuss. You know, the script changes, the all the executive um, maneuvering and changes they made at Warner Brothers. Mm, ben Affleck right. becoming an executive producer. All of that was as a result of this film uh, and the response it got. It, it we had to discuss it and ha we had to discuss why. Those things were happening, and the reason when all goes back to Batman v Superman, and some people may not like it and, and claim that we're being negative, but we wouldn't we wouldn't be doing fair to the to the listeners if we weren't being honest and explaining. Okay, here's Absolutely. what's going on, and and, he, and here's why. Mm -hmm. Yeah, go ahead, Ron. Oh yeah, I mean yeah, that's that's what I've been harping up for, for for a while, and I've been trying to do my best to respond to some comments on on some of the posts on on BOF just to kind of explain our position. I don't know why we have to, but it's just like we we are and like, and like Rick has been saying, this this is our this is our opinion. We're we're being truthful here, and and we're also commenting with with actual facts of things that are really happening. And and the fact is that BBS has. Caught, it was was divisive. You cannot ignore that. You can't ignore that it, it didn't make as much money as they hoped it would make. And you can see the the reaction in both the executive shakeups after BBS and you know this, these Justice League set reports. I mean, mm -hmm. th those things don't happen. The the set reports don't happen like that if if BBS is an un, is a, is a success. It just doesn't happen. You're you're right. It doesn't. And listen, I have friends that are huge Batman fans that absolutely hate this movie. I mean, hate it. My buddy Micah thinks Zack Snyder's the devil. And he <laughs> is and he is as uh, a purest of a DC fan of, as anyone you'll ever meet. And I think that he's way misguided on the way he views this film. I, I, if you hear he and I talking about it, 
I'm the I'm the guy some of these fanboys wish I was on the podcast because by contrast I sound like I'm a huge fan. <laughs> yeah. A couple other things I'd I, like I to feel like we are kind of in the, in the middle in general. Of oh, in the middle. And I, 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 yeah, I feel like we are compared to. Yes. There are there are extreme people that that think uh, PBS is an unabashed like unparalleled quality film, and there are people that think that PBS is the worst like Batman movie ever made ever. You know, I feel like we are. We're being honest with our opinions and, and being a little bit level-headed about it, in my opinion. Well, I wrote yeah. in my review that I think I'm, my take on the film, and we're all pretty close, you know, yeah. is probably what most, how most people feel about it. Yeah. Most people don't love this film. Most people don't hate this film. Most people are kind of, huh, it was all right. There's some things I like, some things I didn't. I, I think that's where most people are, and, and fortunately, it's okay. It was all right doesn't fire people up for for the next film and that's that has been the issue right. since March 25th when this film was released. Oh yeah yeah. Yeah You're and you know on that point yeah real quick on that point about people not being fired up about Justice League some of the comments that we're getting are are directed like well why do people have to be fired up for a film that's a year and a half away? I'm like that was the whole point of BBS is to get people yeah. excited about Justice League and don't ignore that and don't make don't you know don't don't discount that. You know, that is, that's I'm, just... I'm, I'm fired, up. We can't I'm fired up for episode eight. <laughs> that's a year and a half away, too. I'm fired yeah. up for episode eight. Yeah. <laughs> All right, Rick. Yeah. That was the whole point of Bruce Wayne I, I, sending I, Wonder Woman I, YouTube videos. <laughs> yeah. Okay. <laughs> I, no, no. Hey, yeah, 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 Bill, I guess I got a Star Wars plug in, but, yes. but, but, it, was a, but it was an honest statement to what Ryan was Yes, saying. I know. I, I got really, you. it was. And listen, I want I want to just address this real fast in terms of our the people that uh, follow oh. and, and make and make comments and everything. Two quick things. One, this notion that that we think that everyone is quote unquote but hurt that disagree with this. No. And somebody had, was asking, and in fact, multiple people were like, "Well, what's the difference? How do you decipher who's but hurt and who's not?" Well, it's real simple. We can have a respectable exchange of dialogue about this film and respectfully disagree, or you can start saying really shitty things to us like. We want this movie to fail, and then throwing things in our face like – and this is another thing I want to address because I have a lot of respect for Mark Hughes, and I've, I've, I consider the guy a friend at this point. And uh, I've had like five or six people say, well, you know, this, this – Mark Hughes loved the film. It's really suspicious that he hasn't been on any podcasts or been on Batman on Film uh, recently, and just <laughs> little things like that. It's like, look, that's, that's butthurtness. And on a quick note to Mark, since I've seen this multiple times, I've reached out to him myself saying, do we need to do a, a podcast again? He's a friend of the site. He and Bill are very good personal friends. Total nits. I just want to squash that right now. And then in terms of uh, the butt hurtness, we are – there's a big difference in a respectable exchange of dialogue versus these crazy conspiracy theory accusations that we're <laughs> – you know, and, we're out and, there and Rick. We're twitching and, and our mustaches just, and diabolically yes. laughing. Come on. In addition to that, it's the just the, the venom and the anger – Toward someone who has a different opinion, to the point of how do I want to expl uh, say this? It's like you did something personal to someone. You you personally assaulted them somehow. You you know you 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 punched somebody's mother in the face. I mean it's just it's Martha. that kind of venom. Yes, it's punched Martha in the face. <laughs> and I, I, I that's that that and, and I punched Diane Keaton in the face and and Jeffrey Lyons as well. <laughs> So, <laughs> so, oh boy. <laughs> so that's the difference. That's butt hurt. Anyway, you're right. I, I'm. I, I, it's just the, the venom, the anger. Like we've done something personal against towards someone is just that's that's ridiculous. Yeah. So anyway, let me ask. Let's get to, before we start winding this thing up. This thing was R rated. Was there any reason from the, what you saw in the film that? It had to be R-rated to get its point across, get its get its uh, story across. Because I say absolutely, absolutely not. And I'll let Justin start because I know he's got some strong opinions about this. Yes, yeah, absolutely no reason for this movie to be R-rated. Like the stuff that made it R, I would say would have been was probably the F-bomb and the shank in the prison in the prison scene. Like like. A yeah. butt doesn't necessarily make it uh, R-rated, but even no. even that type of stuff didn't need to be in there. Like, <laughs> so so that stuff, I, I it it almost felt uh, like it was really pushing for a. I almost felt like it was a gratuitous R. Like, hey, let's let's try and be R. I, I, I don't I don't know I don't know why any of that stuff was was made. And what really what really bugged me was I really like the stuff that I heard about Justice League coming out. I like it got me excited. 
And one of the things that Deborah Snyder says, well, we always planned on this being brighter, which Terrio even said, like, yes. let's look yeah. that on the table, which what I don't understand is to have to have a series of films that are so disjointed in tone. Like, well, oh, yeah, kids can go and watch Justice League, but kids can't go watch BVS. To me, and I and I speak and I don't want I always feel like I, I brought this up in the past, but as a dad, that's the, that's the part that was the worst part of this whole Batman versus Superman experience for me was I couldn't share it with my son who wants to see it, who play who. He had a Batman versus Superman birthday party two weeks ago because mm-hmm. he's he just loves the idea of both these guys. So yeah, I don't think the movie needed to be rated R, um, and I still think it could like it could have been still could have been grown up and serious. It's just I I don't know, don't know. You're right. I think they it almost like they went out of their way to make it R. Let's see, what we can, let's let's do this and we'll make it R and we'll be edgy and 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 whatnot. So uh, Ryan, your thoughts on the R the R business. In terms of the the R question about about BBS, it's I feel like once now that it's on home video, I'm sure there was less of a concern to have it edited down to PG-13 because that that always happens. It's unrated, it's R, like whatever you can just go buy it. It's not as big of a deal as having it stay R in the theaters, mm-hmm. you know. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And uh, you know the way Zack Snyder kind of shoots, you know, we've talked about this before, philosophy wise. You know, no one will shoot the script, and that's what he does. And Zack Snyder films a lot more. You know, you look at Watchmen; he's got the extended cut. We've got the EBS; we've got the extended cut. Um, so I'm sure he kind of went, did whatever he wanted, and wanted to, you know, craft the film a little bit more in the editing room. Now, it didn't surprise me that was R because I don't. I feel like once it once once they have the question about it being on home video, it's it's oh whatever whatever it's rated is what it gets rated. You know what I mean? And that the, the same kind of thing happened with uh, the Hobbit Battle of the Five Armies. That did not need to be rated R once the extended edition of that came out. And it's, but uh, it's the same kind of deal. Um, but yeah, in terms of should there be an R-rated Batman Superman movie? Like no, you don't need that. You know, and we've been reading comics for years, and they managed to strike a good balance. You know, you can you can tell the story without having to do that and keep it accessible. But it's a very interesting question because here we are in a year where we're going to have two movies rated R that are Batman movies. You know, we're, we're going to have the already killing joke animated film mm-hmm. here, in, here in a few weeks. And, but I, I, you know, we haven't seen it yet. We haven't seen it yet, but I do kind of respect the fact that they said, we're going to make this film and whatever gets rated is what gets rated. But that's one of those isolated incidents where they're already adapting a book that was divisive and was a little bit, you know, had a little bit heavier subject matter. And a film like BBS is something that needs to, hit the mainstream on a certain level. And I don't know if, if keeping an R is the best thing to make it accessible, you know? Yeah. And with, with the killing joke, the only, you know, honestly, the only people who watch those DC animated films, which I, I'm a big fan of the DC animated films personally, yeah. are, are the, they're made for fans. Yeah. You know, it's, it's not like mainstream people go out and get, you know, Batman year one or, or, uh, you know, under the red hood and any of these yeah. different, uh, animated films have came out, but I, I love them, and so you know I have no problem with the Killing Joke being R because you know I mean if you if you if you film it for what it was in the in the source material, it's probably yeah. probably going to be an R. So and it's not one of my favorite yeah. Batman yeah, exactly. stories anyway. But that's you know that's that's a whole different conversation. We can talk about that film and the book at once the once that movie yeah. comes out. So do you know what yeah. you know Dark Knight Returns they they had that whole you know if you can do Dark Knight Returns as an animated feature and it not be rated R I. I like mm-hmm. uh, BBS could have, could didn't have to be rated R either. There, there, there are tweaks. That, my point is there are tweaks that could have been made, but now that it's on home video, it just they, it's not a, as big of a deal for them. Yeah, I really like the animated Dark Knight Returns. Yeah. Oh, it's great. So, yeah, so that's another. We we need to do a show <laughs> on all these animated Batman films at some point. Hey, I had a I had a random thing to bring up about BBS. So if Superman is 33 years old in Man of Steel, right? He says that yes. explicitly a few times. So in yes. this movie, I did I freeze framed the newspaper clipping at the end because I wanted to read it. Thirty five, right? Well, yes, right. Well, yeah, or around there, right? According to oh, I read that newspaper clip yes, too. I paused the, it and read the whole thing. The obit- yeah, in the obituary. Yeah, he was born in nineteen eighty six, which would make him thirty right now. Boo. <laughs> so so either oh, he's yeah. So either this is BBS exists in like twenty you know nineteen or tw- maybe twenty twenty two or. Because it even said this is 18 months later to about yeah. a year later, right? So he should be about yeah. 34, almost 35. Well, he should. Yeah. According to that, he was born in '86, which I don't know if it was just a little. Well, that could uh, make that could make a. Did, it, did, did that newspaper clipping have the current date? Somewhere? I didn't. 
I didn't see that. I looked for that. But I was just thinking, you know, the Man of Steel miniseries came out in 1986. I don't know if they were just kind of doing a – I mean, who reads that? It probably doesn't matter. I just – I read yeah. it, and I just noticed, like – I um, read it, yeah. Yeah, and then uh, Lex Luthor's middle name is Joseph. Well, and Clark they Kent's have the same name. name. Is, they should have been friends. So I mean, maybe one day there will be a fight, and so they say, Joseph. Joseph. <laughs> Joseph. And, okay. Two Josephs you and two Marthas. you got to save and, Joseph. Oh. No, so but the 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 1986 birthday was a little weird to me. Like normally, when you see newspaper articles and movies like that, they're just a bunch of garbled text. But they did go through the time and effort to write, you know, articles that you can pause. Yeah. You know, it repeated film. though. It, it started to repeat. It, it, it did. It did. It did. Yeah. And is it? Yeah. You know, I found I found a couple Easter eggs too. That were, yeah. What were they? So at the Gotham Seaport scene, you know, where you get to see the um the two cops watching the football game and then they leave. Uh, mm-hmm. See that you've actually seen an establishing shot of Gotham, which I was like, great, that's cool. But see Ace Chemicals, you know, it's it's to the right side of yeah. the screen, to the right side of the, the yeah. building. You see Ace Chemicals, which I thought that was a pretty good nod. And of course, there's that that weird Watchmen reference that's right in the middle of the screen too, which I thought was like a strange choice. Like, why do we need this very blatant uh, Watchmen reference? Oh, I didn't there? like that. I thought um, I liked. It. I thought that was cool. And, but you know what? That show, another Watchmen reference shows up later in the film. I'm pretty sure it, in, during the Batman Superman fight. They, there's that scene at the top of the building where it kind of pans, and there's kind of like a question written, like in uh, I think it's Latin, maybe. I'm pretty sure that that translates to "Who watches the Watchmen?" Oh, uh, really? I was able to I was huh. able to pause it, you know, and like you know try to translate it. I, I'm pretty sure that that's what that means. But I was like, man, got to get all the Watchmen stuff in there. No, I that's mean, re- that's really cool, Ryan, about the Ace Chemicals. And if you guys remember in the uh, in the Turkish airline uh, yeah. spots, yeah, that was um, yeah. prominent. All right, let's wrap this up. And let's we're gonna put BBS to bed finally here on the Batman on Film podcast. Or I can't say never say never because something will probably come up. But I think we said pretty much we've we've had our peace with with this film. Yes. Yeah. Yes. I, yeah, I would say that. And I, I don't. I, and look, you know what? I'll watch it probably at least once a year. Yeah, I, I like it enough to to do that. I will not probably, probably not watch it cut because it's just too. I, I don't know if I'll watch it again. I really don't. I just but. You know, there's, there's two different opinions. Uh, Rick's going to watch it once a year. I probably won't watch it again. Justin, what about you? Um, well, I watched it twice this week, and I'm probably going to watch it next week with a couple buddies just to kind of, hey, let's watch it together. Um, yeah. I, again, there's parts I like a lot, and Me I, too. I do like I like and, watching you know what? things and just extrapolating look, and pulling things out. And let's let, let's do this if, if it's okay with everyone. What what is everyone's favorite moment or scene or however you want to phrase it in the film. Well, Justin, what's oh, your, yeah, what's your, what's your favorite? Yeah, yeah. I, I really want to... Let me say this first. One of the things I really pulled out of it on my second viewing, because I was just watching it by myself, the score is so good. I really love the score of this movie. I it's, do. Yeah, absolutely. It's, you know, I listen... I, I put it on the background for my kids when they play a lot, and they, they want to listen to Batman music, but listening to it in the in the film, it was really, it was really great. And at that, the end scene with Bruce and Diana at the funeral, I thought the music really made that scene powerful, man. I really liked, like, you know, Bruce felt terrible how he failed you know failed superman in life and he wants to honor him in death and uh that was moving to me that whole scene was moving that was still moving for me in the theater i remember my wife my wife sitting at me looking at me she's like are you crying i'm not crying but it was it there was a i i I felt like whatever bruce was feeling regardless of how it happened it made me Mm -hmm. it made me have feelings in that in that part of the film i like that's probably my favorite scene Batman, like just tearing tearing stuff up oh the, the scene at the end yeah, yeah. In, in, in my it, view, it, I, I think no, it really is. You're right. We we, we get past the the doomsday garbage and everything, and then the undeserving death. Fine, yeah. but the whole conversation they have, and the editing, and how it cuts back and forth between them talking, the funeral, and then the monument, and everyone standing around with the with, with candle with their uh, their candles lit, and it's it's mm-hmm. it's, a, it's a gorgeous scene. It's a I great love example of and the dialogue doing really something is, well. Yes, that's a, yeah. it, it. So the movie ends on a really positive note for me because of that. Um, that's a great scene, and then I love every single scene with Bruce and Alfred. Every one mm-hmm. of them. Just yeah. I mean, yeah. When, in, in the extended version, when you see him cutting wood and walking it in. Yeah, it's, it's, I was about to say Alfred. Yeah, yeah. But but you know what? I'm not like more Alfred. I'll, I'll take it. You know. So I love every scene with them. I love the Batman fight scene, and I. I really like – here's my favorite sequence, I think, in the film, though, is when you hear uh, Charlie Rose, and he's talking to um, Holly Hunter. Her character's name is escaping me, the senator, right? Senator Finch. Senator Finch. Finch, thank you. And they're talking, and then it cuts back and forth between all these heroic things that Superman's doing, and then you hear other people talking like um, Andrew Sullivan, the uh, political – 
commentator. He's 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 like everything we do is political. That whole thing where it's cutting back and forth between the news, and then when it shows Superman holding up the missile and it just says maybe he's not a god, maybe he's not anything, maybe he's just a, a man trying to do good or something like that. And mm-hmm. that's that 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 whole that whole scene rocks. And I just wanted to yeah. end our last BBS podcast on a positive note for all the people that think we hate this film. Those are some really beautiful moments that I will enjoy for for years to come. Ron, you have a particular favorite scene? Oh yeah, I mean, there's lots of favorite scenes in the film because you know there's there's little pieces and parts that are great in in, in a film that is a flimsy B. I, I feel like if I had to rate the ultimate cut, I'd say it goes from a flimsy B to to a B. But that's just me. Uh, my favorite scene in the film is the still the warehouse fight. You know, it's a little bit more brutal in in the extended cut, but but that that doesn't uh, that didn't change. But uh, I also liked um, the ending where, you know, Batman reveals that he's going to send Lex Luthor to Arkham Asylum. Like, that was, mm-hmm. as a Batman fan, yeah. it was great to hear Batman talk about Arkham Asylum. And the thought that Lex was going to go there is very interesting. There were two Superman moments that I thought were, I mean, a lot, there are actually a lot of good Clark Kent Superman moments in, in the film, in the extended cut that I liked. I liked where he talks to the guy and finds out about Batman. I like how it's a more gradual uh, exploration of Clark Kent finding out who Batman is. I like the scene yeah. at the end uh, where... Uh, where Lex confronts Superman and and uh, and Superman tells uh, Lex like, "Oh, you'll learn." You know that that was like a very Superman moment to me, and I I'm I like that scene at the Capitol where it shows Superman like saving somebody and like yeah. trying to help, and but then he just looks so helpless, like you know he's really questioning his you know his place in the world and and if he can still be Superman. That part is where I. I like Superman to be happy, but I think that's the scene right there that kind of dictates why Superman is sad. Yes, I get why he's sad in this movie. Not that I like it, but I understand. All right, my favorite part is when the ending credits started to roll (laughs) in BBS. I'm kidding. Uh, Something positive? I like the Batman stuff. No, you're not. (laughs) Except for him killing, I thought Ben Affleck was a great Batman. I think Henry Cavill's a great Superman, and I hope that he does more Superman stuff in these upcoming films. And I hope that Henry Cavill gets a solo Superman film yes. because that character deserves it, and he deserves a good, very good Superman film. <clears throat> but yeah, I, could, I mean, I, could, I couldn't, I couldn't agree more. And and on that note, I like Lex personally. I like Lex. Just wanted to throw that out there as well. So I hope I hope that. Lex is in the solo Superman film. Let's go ahead and plug some stuff. Justin, go ahead and tell people where they can find you and what you want them to read or hear. Oh, <laughs> okay. Uh, you can find me on Twitter at J underscore Rocka, and I would love to, to tweet with you. And uh, yeah, again, I talked about last week, our podcast is on hiatus. So that it's Let's Go podcast if you ever want to listen to it and go, oh, that's, that's a nice little show right there. Very good. All right, Ryan. That's what I did, Justin. I listened to it and I thought, that's, that's a good show. So thank you. Yeah. yeah. So anyway, uh, you can follow me on Twitter at SMB underscore Ryan. Um, even though we've been talking about a lot of, to a lot of complaining people lately, you know, just, just keep talking. You know, I, I do think it's important that we just keep trying to work, work things out. And, and, and I don't want to, I don't want to like fight with people, but just talking about this film is, it's, it's one of the only ways we'll be able to kind of rest, I think. And yeah. And visit my Super Mario Brothers movie website at smbmovie.com. All right, Rick, anything you want to plug that uh, announcer Rachel does not uh, do so in the outro? Yeah, I was just going to say that <clears throat> if you're able to come to our Suicide Squad watching party, remember to go ahead and book your hotel rooms and uh, everything for that now. And I'm trying to pull up the date on my phone, Bill. Do you, have, you know what off the top of your head? It's the, it's gonna, it's the 6th, the Saturday. August 6th. Okay, cool. Yes. Very cool. And that's coming up quickly. Yes, it is. I'm, in fact, I'm booking my hotel room as soon as we're done here. Cool. All right, guys, so we're about a month from Suicide Squad, so I think we'll start gearing up some Suicide Squad stuff. I think the news will start pouring in pretty pretty, pretty uh, steadily on that one as we go forward here over the next four-plus weeks. And for everyone here, I'm Bill, and we will catch you next time. Thanks for listening to the Batman on Film Podcast, a proud member and sponsor of the Batman Podcast Network, batmanpodcastnetwork.com. You can listen to the podcast via iTunes, Google Play Music, Stitcher, Spreaker, and wherever good podcasts like this one can be found. Follow Jet on Twitter at Batman on Film and on the BOF Facebook fan page at facebook.com slash jet.batmanonfilm. Email Jet via jet at batman-on-film.com. 
Follow Rick on Twitter at Shoe Rick and on Facebook at Facebook.com slash BOF Shoe. For Jet, Rick, the BOF Roundtablers, Justin and Ryan, I'm announcer Rachel. Thank you and good night.